Object-oriented programming is what's typically used in most application development today. Classes form the foundation of object-oriented programming. You can consider a class to be analogous to a blueprint for building a house, as an example. The blueprint describes the characteristics of the house, and the house is actually constructed or built from that blueprint. When we think about a class, we create the definition of an object using class. And the keyword object is important because that's what we create in the application. Much like you can't live in the blueprint of a house, you can live in a house created from the blueprint. So you live in an instance of a house created from that blueprint. Within object-oriented programming, you can't assign values to a class. So you create an instance of a class in your program, and it's actually referred to as an object. So classes are considered a container for the attributes and behaviors of the objects in the program that we're working with, and we use classes to model real-world objects that we may need to work with in our applications. C-sharp supports all of the object-oriented concepts such as encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism, although unlike some other languages, C-sharp doesn't support multiple inheritance. So in other words, you can't create one class that will inherit from multiple other classes. It can only have one parent class or one base class. And within C Sharp and the .NET framework, all classes basically inherit or ultimately inherit from system.object. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we create classes within Visual Studio and C Sharp. Locate our project folder within the Solution Explorer of Visual Studio. Right-click and select Add from the pop-up menu. And we can choose Class, or if you like keyboard shortcuts, the Shift plus Alt plus C will allow you to add a new class to your project. C Sharp expects you to give your class a name, and in this case, we're going to create a class called Animal. And it automatically keeps this .cs extension for C Sharp. You'll notice that we're using the class template from the visual C Sharp items. Clicking the Add button, we'll go ahead and add a new class to our program called Animal. And you'll see that C Sharp has definitely added a class Animal for us. And Within this class, we want to describe some characteristics and some behavior for an animal class. So what we're going to do is we'll focus on something like string. We could even actually put something here called string type, which will tell us what type of animal this is. We'll use string color to determine the color of the animal. And we might be concerned about how much the animal weighs and how large or how tall the animal is. We can input values such as the animal's age and perhaps even put in something like the number of legs that the animal has. And we're assuming that we might want to use this to represent multiple types of animals. So these are considered to be attributes or characteristics of the class. And in programming language, we refer to these as member variables or member data types. We might also want to have functionality for an animal class, so we can create some methods in here or some functions in here. And in this case, we will create one function. This won't return anything. It'll be public, so it'll be available to all code calling this class. So public void move, and our animal should have the ability to move. We're not going to worry about implementation for right now. And we also think that our animal should be able to make some kind of a noise. So we'll just do a couple of methods for the time being. We're not going to make a class that's, that's too complex or too complicated here. So we've got some member variables and we have some member functions, move and make noise, and member variables. Now it's important when we create our classes that we provide some control over the data that gets assigned to our members. We don't want illegal assignment of values coming into things such as we look at the age for an animal. We wouldn't want somebody to put a negative value in here. So we want to be able to control the information that comes into our member variables. So we're going to use some scope modifiers. And in this case, we're going to use a keyword called private, which basically means that only code within this class has the ability to actually modify these variables. And that's important because as we discuss encapsulation a little bit later on, we'll see how these keywords private allow us to encapsulate the data within our class itself. So we've got some member variables. We've got some functionality. How do we use that in our program? Well, if we come back to our main method within program.cs, 
we can go ahead and create an instance of this animal class by simply using the class name animal. And we can use a new name for the instance called new animal. And then to instantiate a class, we use a keyword called new. So we're saying I want to create a variable called new animal to store a type known as animal or a class of animal. And I want to do so by creating a new instance of that. And that's essentially what that line of code does. So we've now created that and we've told the compiler, I want you to be prepared to set aside enough memory for this variable called new animal that will store a type of animal. And then we can work with that code by simply saying new animal. And by using a dot separator, we can gain access to some of the functions. Now you'll notice that make noise and move are available here because we declared them as public, but none of the other attributes are available. So new animal dot and we can't access age or the color or the height or anything in here. Again, because it was made private in our class. But if we were to execute the code right now, move wouldn't necessarily do anything because we don't have anything written in here. We can very quickly come in here and go console.write line. And we'll just say moved for the time being. So that we actually have something that will work or do something when we call the move method. Control F5 shows us that we have actually moved. So the compiler created the class or created an instance of that class in code for us called new animal. This is the instance. And then we called the move method on that instance of the animal class. And all it did was it simply printed out information, like we said, moved from here. So a very quick introduction to creating classes within C Sharp. We've created one called animal.cs, and we've given it some attributes, and we've given it some methods. And in later modules, what we're going to do is focus on how we can continue to work with this encapsulation that we've talked about in here by creating something called properties within the class that allow us to access these tidbits of information here.